So, hello everyone. Good, good morning or good afternoon, depends where you are. My name is Ami Feiner from Provision ISR. Together with me is Ilan Komorowski from our uh, product management team and our preset engineer. Thank you very much for joining. Today, we, our seminar is about uh, Provision ISR new camera firmware. Uh, firmware number 513 and 5131. For those of you who do not know what am I talking about, so uh, we you probably received an email from us last, uh, I think it was last week, yeah, Thursday, uh, with a firmware uh, announcement regarding IP camera with firmware number 5130 and 5131 carrying uh, three new analytics, which are a very interesting one. And um, so for those of you that hasn't received any email, please send us an email to sales at provisionisr.com. It'll make sure that you will get our uh, firmware announcement or any other uh, firmware. For those of you that did, uh, so you have uh, the links to all the movies and to all the material and for a landing page that explain this new feature and all the features that involved with it, including some tutorial movies. Uh, but of course you came for today's seminar, so you, you will learn it today. Um, this webinar will be about uh, 35 minutes long and conducted by uh, Ilan. Uh, at the end of this seminar, we will leave room for questions and so stay tuned and thank you very much for joining you know go ahead you know when you share your screen yes. remember the audio ah uh, yeah yes thank just you just a second so uh hello everybody my name is Elon, as i mentioned and i'm a new in the product department uh, and today i'm going to show you some new features of the uh, displayed uh, PowerPoint versions, which is 5.1.3.0 and 5.1.3.1. So let's start and dive into it. So the first uh, feature I would like to mention in this new firmware is a new type of analytic called illegal parking. So basically it's a scenario when we have some uh, vehicle parked in the zone, which is not supposed to have parking there, uh, or it's staying in specific zone for amount of time and uh, create some kind of obstacle for others. Like in this case, you can see a uh, bicycle driver, which needs to overcome this obstacle. So uh, in which scenarios you might use such uh, analytic in case you, you have some users who are complaining repeatedly about somebody who is blocking their exit early from the parking zone. Or maybe you have uh, a parking area which is for only unloading goods. So uh, the vehicle is supposed to come in for like 5-10 minutes and supposed to deliver something and then get out of it. So this zone is supposed to be always empty. It could be used as well for a bus stop, meaning that uh, no car is supposed to be there, just a bus which is coming, uh, some people getting out and it goes away. So basically, this is the way you can use such a feature. And now let's see how actually it's, it is working, configured, and uh, how the result looks like. So uh, as we are talking about specifically firmware, we are talking currently on the how it works on the camera side, on the web interface of the camera. So what you see here is some crop out of the web interface of the camera. And the only new thing that you see here is specifically the time threshold. So basically the analytic you see here is uh, very, um, it resembles very much the intrusion we have here, meaning that the sterile area that you define. And uh, currently what you know is the analytics that reacts immediately to car or human, which is, comes to the specific zone. But in this case with illegal parking, we're talking about vehicle specifically, so you can choose which kind of object is going to trigger this analytics. And the most important part is how long this object is supposed to stay in this zone. So you might uh, use this analytics specifically to catch, for example, only motorcycles or bicycles, which are coming to some area and stay there for a long time. 
or you can use it only for cars or both of them. So you can, you have a flexibility to choose which kind of object you are talking about and you can set the sensitivity, meaning that maybe your car, uh, your object is far from the camera. So you can play with sensitivity to make it more sensitive and detecting those objects more frequently. Last part I would like to, two things I would like to mention the screen is first, you can create four zones. You see this one zone, but you can create up to four zones and um, for all the zones, the reaction, the threshold is going to be common uh, parameter, which means that you cannot create like four zone and for each zone, you will have a different threshold. It's going to be the common parameter currently for all of the four zones. Another thing that you need to know about is the bounding box. For every object that uh, comes to this zone, uh, the trigger is starting from the bounding area of this object. So you see this car, you have this uh, rectangle around this uh, object, and this is how the interaction in the camera starts. Meaning when the car is going to touch on one of the sides of this area, there is going to start a counter internally in the camera, counting down this amount of time. So we're going to see in next video uh, how exactly it's working and uh, how the counter is actually running. And before I uh, start the video, I would like to show you the result. So basically you see here, there are two zones and both of those zones are red, meaning they are active and we're getting this notification of illegal parking. But in this case, you understand the logic of this analytic meaning that you have those bounding box around every object and you understand that this box is actually touching the side of this area in this case. And in this case, there are, you have some objects even inside. So the counting is starting and anytime this car is staying in this zone for longer than the threshold, you're going to get this notification. Uh, before I show the video, I would like to mention that I wanted to show you the reaction to this specific analytics. So the reaction is going to be alarm out. So I'm going to shorten the relay on the camera. And once it's going to find this scenario of illegal parking, we're going to have alarm out triggered on and you can trigger some external device from the camera. So let's see the video and understand totally how it's actually working. Uh, so we recorded a specific scenario and uh, uh, let's start by configuring the camera. So um, we are getting into the uh, uh, analytics area and we are clicking on the illegal parking area. And I, we are now currently in the illegal parking configuration page. So the first thing you do is you click on enable to start uh, being sensitive to this specific scenario. Later, you can configure some other things, like if you want to create a snapshot, put it in SD card. But what is interesting for you is to choose what kind of object is going to trigger this analytic car or the two-wheeled object. Okay. And as a result, what I mark here is a checkbox checkbox of the alarm out, meaning that if this scenario is going to happen after this amount of time, then you are going to close the shortcut uh, to shorten the circuit of the relay on the camera itself and trigger some external device. So the most important part here is that this actually this field. So it means how long, as I mentioned, the object is going to stay before we're going to trigger the alarm. So in this case, you have a flexibility up to 10 hours of time. Let's see how. Oh, sorry, this is one hour, 3,600. It's one hour of uh, seconds. 3,600 seconds is one hour. So you can uh, define this threshold up to one hour of waiting time. Now we continue to the area where we want to set the sensitivity and finding the specific scenario. So we are going to draw some area and we're going to see how it's going to work with it. So as I already mentioned, you can create up to four of those zones. Now, I'm going to start playing the video. The one thing I would like to mention here, you're going to see a counter running. This is something we added just for you. It's a 
part of the video, but this is running internally inside the camera. So you're not supposed to see it uh, on the stream of the camera, but it's just for you as a viewer to understand how the camera is working and counting time. Another thing, if you have two objects coming into the zone, for each object, you have a different counter. So if this car is going to come in and get out, but the other object is going to be inside, the, each one will have its own counter. So you can see that I deliberately get into this area and not triggering this alarm because I was less than those 15 seconds I configured here. Once I'm going to get inside and stay longer than the defined threshold of time, we're going to see this alarm here on the illegal parking and we're going to see alarm out triggered. It's going to happen now, 10 seconds, and you can see both alarms are triggered. Okay, so the next video is about, the, the next uh, analytics is going to be about loitering. So basically loitering is finding a person, not a vehicle, and the person is supposed to stay in specific area for X amount of time, the same logics as with vehicles, with illegal parking. So what it could be used for? It could be used, for example, for giving a better service. So if you have too long, uh, somebody is waiting in a queue for too long to get a service and uh, you want to catch the specific scenario and improve your service level, you can define the area of waiting queue and uh, get a trigger. Somebody waits more than 10 minutes, for example. Another uh, security scenario, somebody is waiting near ATM machine too long. He's looking for a victim to rob him. And so basically you're, uh, you can catch him by just letting the camera calculate the time this person stays in this area. Uh, you can use it, for example, for if you have uh, some um, security issues with vandalism and uh, there are people who are staying in the area and they're starting, uh, you know, vandalizing stuff. So you can set a counter as well in this area or somebody who stays in a place uh, crowded with people, but usually not supposed to stay there, a drug dealer or whatever. So you can uh, define this area where you're not supposed to have people staying for too long. Okay, sorry for examples. So let's see how it's actually working. So um, again, we have some crop out of the web interface and as well, you have here exactly the same things we saw before with the vehicles. In this case, you have a threshold time as we saw with vehicle and you have a specific area. And again, you can set up up to four areas. And once you have this uh, object touching or inside this specific zone, you're going to get this loitering event and you are going to be able to react to it. Let's see a video. So we're getting in a second, we're going to get to the configuration. So we're clicking inside web interface on the loitering detection. And inside loitering, we're going to enable this feature. So we are going to start being sensitive to the specific uh, analytics. We're clicking on the area, defining the area exactly as we did with the vehicle. Same logics, you can create up to four areas. And we're going to set up the threshold time, how long this person is supposed to stay in this area. We can continue working with 15 seconds. And the important part, alarm out. I want to trigger something. I want to, I don't know, to trigger external flash or sound uh, devices, which is going to scream on the person to get out of this zone. So I'm coming to live and we are ready to test this feature. So we have our uh, colleague ask him to get into the zone, but I ask him to get out of it. So uh, after like 10 seconds, I want him to get out. So he will not trigger this specific area. Currently, you see just motion here, which is, uh, was triggered. The camera got the motion of somebody, but he went out before 15 seconds. Now he's going to get inside. But in this case, I would like you to understand that I'm asking for two people to get inside this zone. For each one of them is going to be a different counter. So the other person is going to get into it, but he is going to run with a shorter timer. Okay, because this person is going to stay 15 seconds. Once he's going to reach 15, we're going to get alert, but this one is going to have a different counter. So we already have alert and we have alarm out. Okay, so just to verify that you understood this part. So 
this is the result. You have here a red uh, blinking uh, two alerts. This one is the actual analytics, and this one the reaction to the analytics, which is alarm out relay. Next, we're going to talk about audio exceptions. Audio exception is a new feature inside this firmware, and this basically is looking for two scenarios. One scenario is something very loud above uh, average and something uh, which is uh, changing in the sound. So you have environmental sound, some noise, and suddenly this noise stops, like a machinery stops. So we want to catch the scenario and react to it. So uh, in the interface, you can understand it's very simple. Basically, you're coming to audio exception and you define those two scenarios. Either I'm going to have a very high spike of sound and I want to react to it, or I have suddenly decrease of sound, like I have machinery working on the construction zone and somebody uh, stops electricity and they have a failure and the whole zone stops working. So basically I'm looking for those scenarios. I want to react to those. Uh, we're going to see this uh, wave sound, which is going to be displayed by a web interface and uh, later by NVR as well. And you're going to understand that the main part here is this line. You see the blue line? This is a threshold. So basically we're looking uh, for the sound, which is going to be about above this specific threshold or below this specific threshold. And we are going to react to each one of those. Let's see how it's actually working in the video. So I, I understand that you cannot hear, but this is a part of a video where the dog is barking and it creates a... Sorry? I hope you heard I put put my microphone into the headpiece. No, no. But in any yes. You didn't? Okay, so imagine that you have a barking here. Uh, I can bark, but you can believe me there is a barking here. So uh, once this barking is happening, we want to catch the scenario. So the first thing we need to do is to come to the camera and enable the microphone. So the microphone actually is going to bring us sound. So first thing first is we are coming to video audio of the camera and clicking on enable to make sure that we are working with the microphone. The next question is going to be which microphone? You are talking about internal microphone in the camera or line in external microphone. And this could be used for catching scenarios of, uh, of something happening far from the camera and even in a zone that cameras cannot see. Like for example, if you have a hospital and uh, you, you want to catch somebody screaming. And uh, for that uh, reason, you're going to put camera outside of the hospital or a room, but you're going to put the microphone inside the room itself, uh, just prolong it with a cable from the camera. So you can choose which one of the sources you're going to use. Okay, and the second part here is what is going to be your sensitivity on the microphone, meaning I can increase sensitivity. So every noise is going to create for me a high wave, or I can decrease it and it's going to be less sensitive, but uh, the noise should be very high. So I will be able to react to it. Okay. Let's see. So uh, next, we are going to the analytics itself, to audio exception here in Alarm, and let's see what configuration we can do here. So the first thing we click on the enable, just to enable this function, so we'll be able to react to scenario of sound, of high sound or low sound. Let's see the curve that coming after I enabled it. So you see my microphone is on and I enable this uh, sensitivity for this uh, abnormal sound and I can already see two waves. And the most important part, I want to pause here. So why do I see here two waves? Because the uh, new provision ISR cameras have uh, in some versions, some models, they have dual microphone. So each microphone is bringing its own wave uh, curve. And the most important part here is this threshold. This threshold is something we are going to play with. If it's going to be below threshold, we are going to react to it as a suddenly stop of machinery. If it's going to be above this level, we are going to catch a dog barking, for example. So let's start with the first scenario. Of course, I want to react to it. I want to do alarm out, some relay to see that I'm reacting to this scenario. So first scenario is going to be above when uh, the sounds, uh, when there is going to be a sound increasing above the threshold. So I'm going to set here to play with it, to put some sensitivity. And I'm going to set the threshold, which is going to be the line, the blue line that I want to cross and go over it. So currently you see, I have a threshold and I have a relatively low sound. Why? Because I have environment sound, nothing uh, unique. I have uh, like silence near my house. 
And once my dog is going to bark, I want to catch this specific scenario. So I'm, let's see how it's actually working. So once the dog is going to bark, we're going to hear and we're going to see. But once he is starting to bark, we are going to see immediately here the reaction in the blinking of those two icons, the sound icon and the alarm out icon. Okay, and uh, so this is the reaction to above threshold. But now let's talk about the other scenario of uh, machinery. So we have machines working and we want to catch a scenario of somebody stops electricity and the machines become silent. So uh, we have here a machine working and I would like to mention here that and unfortunately you cannot hear the sound but you can take from us the videos later and in those videos you will hear constantly the sound. Why it's mandatory for me to have the sound always on because I want to calibrate my camera so it will understand that it has constant noise and I will be able to, to set my threshold so only when my threshold is in the right position and when the noise is going to drop down, then it's going to cross this threshold. This is why my calibration I need to do in noisy environment because I want to catch un noisy environment. I want to catch quiet environment and react to it. So let's see how I'm actually doing it. So as you can see, I'm working in this area, sudden decrease of sound intensity. I'm playing with those uh, parameters and I'm going to play with threshold to calibrate my camera and let's see. So currently this is wrong because I have my threshold somewhere in the area of noise of my machinery. To make it work properly I need to decrease my threshold so once it's going to drop down it's going to touch this line and we're going to react to it. So let's see how I am changing the threshold level. Now you see I did it, I removed I, I took my threshold down and the next case when I'm going to stop my machinery sound, this constant sound, it's going to drop down below this line and we are going to have a trigger. So I'm going to stop the machineries in the factory. We're going to stop it in three seconds. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted to show you. So you see there is a sound reaction, there is a sound alert, and I have alarm out and the reaction to this specific scenario because it became quiet and the sound went below the threshold. Here, here, threshold. Okay, you will see, you're going to see me jumping to the config and you see that the line crossed the threshold and went below and this is why we have this reaction. Okay, next uh, we're going to talk about the difference between the release of uh, 5130 uh, and 51301. So 5130 includes uh, three optional analytics into it, but you can trigger and work with only one of them at the same time. So either you're going to work with face, detect face and create snapshots, or you're going to work with number two, which is uh, metadata, all this uh, metadata creation of understanding what is the car, uh, uh, color, uh, what are the upper or love, uh, uh, shirt color, uh, like uh, sex of the human, uh, if it's a female, male, uh, etc. So this is metadata, or you can work with third option, which is DDA, and it's all the stereo line, cross lines, and the loitering and the legal parking, which we learned about it. So you can use either this one, this one, or this one. You cannot use all three of them uh, as a limitation of this specific firma. Okay. And uh, which means that if you want to work with metadata, you will not be able to use other features here, or you will not be able to use face. But if you are going to see the next version, which is 5131, in this case, we embedded two of uh, heavy analytics into one, meaning that you can work either with face 
or you can work with all the analytics you heard about before. So you can use metadata with all the illegal parking, loitering, all of it together, meaning you can trigger all of the lines together, all of the rules, and they are going to work uh, together and non, uh, with non-conflicting mode, okay? But again, you cannot work with the faces at the same time. So either it's going to be face detection creating snapshots or it's going to be all of this class of analytics all together uh, creating huge amount of rules uh, on your camera. But it's working, tested, everything is working perfectly. So uh, the last part in uh, this uh, version of uh, 5131 is FTP. So we have embedded in our new version the SFTP and FTPS uh, protocols for a more secured uh, transformation of information to FTP server. So uh, you can read about FTPS and uh, SFTP, it's uh, a protocol, but uh, how you actually use it in our new software uh, firmware version in a camera. So basically when you come to FTP, you are capable to choose in a protocol of uh, type of server you can use besides FTP previously, you now have three, two, two more options, FTPS and this FTP. And basically what is FTP is for? Uh, the FTP in this case, when working with camera, can be used to send the log and a snapshot and the full frame to the external computer, which is running FTP server. For you to learn about this feature, I actually created a demonstration, so you'll be able to understand better why it's used for. So uh, I started uh, FileZilla on my computer, and I run this FileZilla to simulate FTP server on my specific computer, and my computer IP is this one, okay, in local network. So I went to the camera and I configured side FTP, this uh, name of the server, this is IP of the server, this slash means where it's going to fall into my computer, into a specific folder. Uh, port, I opened my firewall, so uh, it's going to, uh, there will be no problem with the uh, connection between my computer and the camera. And I use the user and password I uh, generate inside FileZilla. But in this case, I use not FTP, but I use secured communication FTPS. And uh, once I click on test, I just saw in my computer on specific folder where which I defined, I saw a text file and uh, I understand that actually my camera is capable to generate to some information to my computer. So how you can actually use it. So if we're talking about very basic scenario, emotion, for example, somebody moves uh, near my camera, so I can come to the motion of the configuration of the camera and uh, set that if there is a motion, trigger FTP and send to this IP address, uh, not only log, but attach to it a picture. And then you would ask a second question, okay, uh, nice, but what kind of picture are you going to send? So if you're going to come to image, video, audio, and come to video, you are going to see here send snapshot, and then you're going to be able to choose which kind of resolution you're going to send, sub, and you have here a configuration of sub, or main, which is going to be 8 mega in this case. So if you are going to see the result, on my computer you see this folder, which is uh, created by some me moving near the camera, and what you are going to see here is that when I started working with the substream, I got the small files. You see small files of 52K. But when I choose to work with mainstream and I wanted to get higher resolution, my files became uh, much bigger. So in addition, besides the pictures, you're going to get this uh, log file, which is going to contain information like uh, what generated uh, this specific uh, picture. Uh, but the more interesting scenario is when you're working with faces basically how it could be used commercial wise so commercial wise is uh, let's assume that your uh, customer is having a face detection camera looking on the road and you are telling him that besides his nvr on his computer he's going to aggregate all the faces of any person who is coming near to near his house so how you actually do it you just come to face detection you say here that besides this function which is running on the camera Trigger FTP. So FTP, the camera is going to send to FTP anytime you have a trigger of face appearing in the camera. You're going to find the face as a snapshot, which is cropped out face, and you're going to find the whole picture, the whole frame, 16 by 9, and you're going to get the log. So basically, your customer is going to have double backup. He's going to have NVR with all the recording, and he's going to have on his computer uh, years of years of uh, faces of anybody who access his house and everything stored on his computer, specifically the information about faces. So if anybody's going to steal his NVR, he's always going to have some additional backup. 
this is it. This is everything we wanted to talk about in this uh, PowerPoint. So if you have any questions, we're here to help you. Thank you very much, uh, Ilan. Uh, for those uh, of you that was not clear, uh, firmware 5.1.3.0.01 is available for uh, EyeSight series cameras, what we call IPEN. I wrote the um, I wrote the model uh, in the chat box, and it doesn't matter if it has a V2 or V4. It's at the end, as long as it has IPEN in the model, you can uh, you can work with it. Um, Ilan, are you with us? Hi, I'm Ron. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to confirm because we already received some version 4 cameras. That's um, fine. They will work. So the, uh, the I'm going to close our recording and then we're going to leave uh, some room for questions. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be sent to all of you together with the presentation, with the movies that you saw today, so you can translate and use it in you know, your next seminars and such. And uh, that's it regarding our uh, webinar.